Welcome to this session of Take 5, Expert Answers in 5 Minutes. I'm Kelly McCarthy, and I'm joined today by Steve Gomez, Professional Development Manager for Milady, the premier source for beauty industry education, serving the beauty and wellness industry since 1927. Steve, thanks for joining me. It's my pleasure. So the question we're addressing in this session was posed by a PBA student member, Jenny R., and she asks, how can I make my resume stand out from the rest? This is a great question, and we hear this a lot at PBA. I'm sure everyone at Milady does, too. So Steve Gomez, what do you recommend for Jenny? Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Kelly. This is a great question, and Jenny, thanks for posing it. Let's begin by identifying what the purpose of your resume is. Your resume is a snapshot of you. Think of it this way. If you were going to a party or a social function and you wanted to look your best, you would take the time to make sure that your clothes were pressed and clean, your shoes were shined, your makeup was done, you were immaculate, you were presentable, and you felt good about the way you looked walking out the door. Well, the same uh, thought process can be applied to your resume. From a professional standpoint, you want to show your unique qualities. What are the things that are going to impress me about you? And this can definitely come across in adjectives you use, uh, words that you use to, to really describe who you are, uh, what you're passionate about. Your education will also show me a little bit more about you and tell me about your path, what you're committed to learning, where you've come from, your experiences, the different jobs that you have, the type of schooling that you had, and what you have accomplished, what have you achieved. There's so much to look at that you've done. You have to take the time to be clear about it. Now, when you're putting together a resume, there's five key components to creating that wow resume. Your personal contact information. This is important. It has to be clear. You can't have anything out of place. Uh, you, can't, you have to make sure that once you type it out, you go back through and make sure that you haven't had a typo. Your objective is important. This is going to make you stand out. I want to know what you're committed to what type of environment you want to work in, what type of career that you want to have, that you want to build. Next is your experience and skills, your accomplishments and your education. And then finally, having quality references, people that can back up what you're saying about yourself in your resume. Now, the most important places that a uh, potential uh, boss potential salon is going to look at is your experiences and skills and your accomplishments and your education. So we're going to focus the rest of our time on these places. But before we do, just remember, your personal contact information needs to be clear and correct. Your objective needs to show what you want to do long term. And you have to have some references that, again, back up what you say you are and who you say you are and what you're looking to accomplish in your career. So let's look at your experiences and your skills. You want to include transferable skills. What do I mean by this? Well, your, transfer, your transferable skills mean what have you accomplished in a prior job or trainings that you've had that can show me that what you've accomplished could be useful in my salon or spa culture, in my environment. You want to look at things like subjective skills, like your attitude, your approach. Are you hungry to learn? Are you knowledgeable? Do you stay late, work hard, those type of things. Your customer service background. Do you have any experience in serving the public that you can then parlay into this future career? Uh, have you had a job working the front desk at a salon? Uh, have you worked at a grocery store? Have you worked in restaurants? Uh, have you uh, volunteered time at your church serving the congregation? There's so many different ways that you can look at it. Back in high school, were you a member of any important clubs or organizations? 
Did you serve on any student boards? And are you affiliated or have you been with any charities? Have you volunteered your time? These things really are going to make you stand out and show that you're a giver, show that you're somebody that's about community involvement. Now, if you're still in school and maybe you haven't been uh, affiliated with anything like this, now is your time to get out there and make that difference. Because let's face it, this industry isn't just about what you do technically and creatively. This industry is about building relationships. It's about building community. It's about making an impact in your community. So your ability to start doing those things now and adding them to your resume will have a significant impact on somebody looking at wanting to hire you. And then lastly, from an experience and skill set standpoint, are you proficient with computers? Uh, are you proficient with any programs? Uh, are you active in social media? Do you have your own Facebook page, your own Instagram page? Uh, are you using an iPad uh, that you can have your portfolio on? These type of things are going to be important for you. You want to show that you have the ability to connect socially. And if I'm looking to hire you, I'm going to look at your resume, and I might jump on social media and Facebook pages and check you out. So if you do have those pages, keep them clean. Demonstrate your work. Show, show your progression in your education at school, that you've been to shows, that you're following other people within the industry that you want to learn from and emulate. These things make a big impact on your resume and on the ability for somebody to want to hire you. Now let's look at your accomplishments. You might sit here saying, well, I haven't really accomplished anything. I'm just getting out of cosmetology school. Well, sure, but you know, when you were in school, you should have had a career arc in school, meaning that you started from point A, you know, and you were learning the basics, you were working on mannequin dolls, you were getting comfortable using your tools, and then you began to work on clients and slowly build a client base in school that you serve. So it's important for you to track everything. Like how many clients have you been servicing on a weekly basis? Tracking your average service ticket per client, your average retail ticket per client the number of referrals that you've had, the percentage of people that have come back that you've rebooked actually, and your weekly service and retail goals. These things are important for you. You have to be able to track what you're accomplishing. Because when you do and you put it on your resume, you're going to wow that prospective salon leader who's looking to hire you and you're going to gain their attention because you're showing them that a, you're tracking your numbers, and B, that they're going up and they're improving. And here's, here's where the rubber meets the road. If you begin to track this now and you see that your numbers aren't improving, well, that should be an impetus for you to get in gear and get them improving. Because at the end of the day, when you do get into that first job in your first salon environment, your whole goal is to increase your client base increase your averages because that means that your customers are doing more than just let's say a haircut with you or just a facial with you you know when your clients are spending more money with you that's a clear signal that they trust you they trust your recommendations and that you're serving them that's why you track your numbers that's what you want to look for in growth your numbers increasing is a clear indication that you're serving your customers at a high level and that's what a salon owner manager or leader is going to be looking for when they want to see your numbers. So track them. They are a big part of what you accomplish and you're going to want to put that on your resume. As you've just learned, there's in this very short period of time, there's a lot that you can put into this to make it rock, to make your resume stand out. Take your time, get your ducks in a row, and then put everything pertinent in here to make your resume stand out so that you can wow that person who's looking to hire you and you can find the right environment to work in. Take your time and get it right and you'll find a great place to work. Good luck to you, Jenny, and anybody who's listening to this. Be patient with your path. Have fun with it because it's quite the great industry to be a part of and it's an excellent journey that you are embarking on. Back to you, Kelly. Thank you, Steve. Wow, you gave Jenny and all of our listeners just great advice for crafting an outstanding resume. 
Steve Gomez is the Professional Development Manager for Milady. Remember to visit probeauty.org forward slash edu online to submit your questions for our experts.